Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Welcome to our Crochet Podcast, episode 25. Hi, and welcome to everybody who has just popped in. Please grab your crochet or your knitting, whatever you're working on, a cup of tea, get yourself comfortable. We generally talk about crochet in the first half and some Kenya bits at the end. I should explain, uh, I'm Canadian. I moved to Kenya about 18 years ago. My kids are all born here. I've lived here obviously forever. So we kind of digress into that towards the end of the video. And I usually put a little clip of something out and about at the end of the video. I also have birds. I have an African grey who I have tucked behind in my dining room and I have a cockatiel and a budgie still here although I've covered them up. Um, my cockatiel has laid four eggs now so I guess she's a girl bottom line for that so she uh, anyway she's flapping over there but she's covered up. Uh, so get yourself comfortable get your crochet I have my notes so I start with just introducing everything and then uh, Welcome some returning viewers. Thank you. Oh, I should also say we do on this channel, if you're new, we do crochet tutorials. We do a crochet cal every month and we do podcasts on Wednesdays. I'm thinking of also Mondays. There's too much to talk about once a week. And uh, we do a live chat on Fridays at 1400 GMT. We'll get into that later, but if that's something you're interested in, if you're like a crochet yarny kind of person, hit the subscribe button below and the notification bell beside that, and you'll get a notification of when we post new things, especially our live streaming events, so you don't miss anything. So that's the business. I think that's it. I tried to be, I don't know, I got to get it written. I got to figure that out. I got to have like a blurb and then be done with the blurb. I'm also recording on my phone today, so I can use my microphone and hopefully it's not so echoey. I'm giving it a try. I might have to re-record it on my camera, but hopefully not. Um, so I want to say a special hello to some returning viewers who have had the courage basically to introduce themselves because I know how awkward that can be and I really appreciate everybody that has and everybody who is now um, talking to each other and replying to each other has joined our Facebook group. We have such a great community and I want to thank the people with the courage to join us. So I want to say uh, a special hello and welcome to Christy from Louisiana and Bernadette who is B. Consolio on, that's her YouTube tag, but her name's Bernadette. Hi! She has been commenting for, a while, for, commenting for a while, but has not introduced herself, so thank you. It's always so great to get to know uh, you, because I end up being the one who's talking all the time, and it's nice to hear from you. And also Glenda and Suzanne and Karen. Oh, and Marky. I usually only say five, but I couldn't narrow it down. I'm sorry. And moving on to crochet bits, I do suppose. So whips, the lion head, it looks the exact same. It looks a bit bigger. So that's kind of on hold. I'm still working on that back panel because you need to count. And I found it's difficult to count and parent at the same time because my daughter was sitting here and she's like oh yeah mom what about this and what about that and I'm like counting to 20 at this point in time like and you can't really well I don't know that's a long period of time for a kid to wait without um thinking you're mad at them basically <laughs> so I decided I needed like a parenting crochet project like something I could do and parent and not upset my kids or have my kids, you know, worried that mom's mad or mom's not talking to them. So, plus it was bloody freezing. 21.1 degrees Celsius. I know that that is not cold for the average person. I understand. But you average, like not average people, but like average place to live in the world. But no central heating here. So you can't, there's no place to warm up. Your idea, like warming up is like a hot water bottle. Which I sleep with at night two of them really helps. And my, and my Scraptastic blanket has now officially moved to my bed. It is fabulous. 
um, so dreamy. It was so such a squishy. It's oh, it's great because it's so heavy. And then I was like, oh, because my boys, I have a five-year-old and a four-year-old, and they're kind of like raised together. They're not they're uh, adopted, not related. We were just lucky to to uh, have them join our family, basically. Uh, a real blessing, but one, to keep everything separate, because you have to buy two of everything to keep the, you know, the fights down, is one is blue and one is red. So I want to make, or started making, uh, scraptastic blankets for my boy. Oh, it goes this way. So that's the red. So the idea was start with a bit of black. So that's four rows, half double crochet of the black, and then two balls of red. So two more balls of black and two balls of red. And then progressing up, let me move those ones. So these colors going from the red all with black and ending just with the double yellow at the top, four rows. So those ones, that's for my boy, and then my, that's for my five-year-old. Then my four-year-old came over and was like, where's mine? Right, of course he does. So then I started the second one. I was like, okay, I'll just do each color. I'll do each color and then switch. So one color on one blanket, finish it. One color on the next blanket, finish it. Kind of like two at a time socks. That was my thinking. Oops, I'm doing stitches. That's a bad thing. I guess I did not put a stitch marker. So this is the blue one. So same four rows of black and then two balls of blue and two balls of the lighter blue going on to a lighter blue and then a green, two balls of each. It's kind of worked out where it's three balls and three balls. Well, a little bit more. So that sucks, kind of, to be honest with you, but that's the idea of it. So it's, it's half scraptastic, half not, but super, and just as wide as the mattress on the bunk bed. It's about, I guess it's about three or four inches wider, but not like a big heavy thing, literally just a cover to drag over them at night <laughs> when they're cold. And this is how I'm doing it. Do, 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 with my neck light, not even joking. So this thing is so fabulous. I'm literally using it every day, like every day at night. Do, 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 do. Plus I can use the black yarn like no man's business because you can see it. And I even just use one light. I don't even use both because you don't need both. So I just literally live with this one. I will have a description uh, or link in the description box below because this thing is a... Uh, it's a must, it's a must have. Plus I'm using an eight millimeter hook and I don't think the crochet uh, lights go up to eight millimeter that I found, maybe they do. I can Google that actually. So anyway, that is my whip, working on that. Hope to get it done sometime this week or next week because you know, time does speed up. Um, oh, and my lion head, is it hard? Someone was asking me if a lion head is hard. It is a bit confusing in that there's certain pattern bits that um, are in most of the patterns because there's a bunch of different heads you can make in that book. So like the base, she'll be like, okay, turn to this page. And then that page will kind of be like, okay, well, for these 10 rows, it's this page. And then for those next 10 rows, you follow another pattern. So you're kind of jumping around. I did have to frog it once a little bit to get back because I didn't I missed the part where she said to go to another page. But once you understand how she jumps around, then it's easy. You just have to count. So there's nothing actually tricky about it other than literally you are counting your stitches the whole way. So I'm taking a bit of break for that. Well, not really a bit of a break. I just want to get these blankets done because it's bloody freezing. 21.1. Um, Oh, my flower shawl. That was another question. I'm kind of mixing the questions in with the crochet stuff. That one is a UFO. I, I feel like I have to cut. Well, let me show you. 
So this one, I do love it, but it, I feel like it's too open here, like, which I guess is still kind of cool, but then it's too open here, like it needs more flowers. So I have to put two more flowers here, I think, and then it'll look better, like that kind of, like a nice shape. But then I'm doing a tutorial, so I have to cut these off because they're my joining ones. So I kind of have to, I have, to t I have to remove these two and attach two more and then film putting these two back. So unfinished, unfinished object, but it's cute, right? I mean, I really do like it, but I haven't done it, but I like it. Um, so before I totally digress off of crochet topics, I just want to get your opinion about paid patterns or free patterns. Um, I've spent the week rebuilding my website. Um, yarn shop, obviously, but kind of like maybe yarn shop is not my passion. Like I love having yarn. Is selling yarn something I enjoy? No, it's not. Like even some of you even commented, like when someone came and bought my bamboo, which has now moved on to another shelf on that side, you're like, oh, well, you seem sad. And it was like, I think I am. Like I think it does, because you're like, oh, like I don't know. It's like, it's, a, it's, a, it's sad. So maybe I'm, I'm thinking of basically transitioning away from having a yarn shop and more of a, uh, community Com like hanging out with you guys totally makes me happy I totally enjoy it I totally like it puts a hop in my step you know what I mean and um, I feel it just adds to everything it doesn't there's it there's no negative to it you know it's like so great whereas someone coming and buying all my bamboo kind of hurts my feelings or if you have something fabulous and somebody comes and buys like you know they leave one ball behind or something and you're like do. I have one ball left. So I'm thinking maybe transitioning away from yarn shop and which my website was a yarn shop. So I restructured the website. It took a couple weeks. I'm not done, but I have the layout figured out um, of how, because so tutorials and the podcast and the written patterns that go along with it. So if you wanted a pattern for something and I do have it written down, which I don't have for all my patterns, then it would be on the website. So then the whole thing, because I do have e-commerce set up, is charge for some patterns or don't charge for patterns. You know what I mean? And I have thought about it, because some patterns, you know, it takes a long time to write. Like the short ones, fine, I mean, that's not a problem, but some are like six pages long. And it, you know, it takes time and the revising of it and the testing of it and all that, it is, it is a process a time consuming process. So free or paid, da da da. So I'm thinking about it, always have been thinking about it. And what I always come back to is move when I moved to Kenya, so 17 years ago. Um, yes, we had credit cards. Yes, we had internet, couldn't use them, couldn't buy anything online to save my life. Uh, internet so slow, you couldn't, it would time out, like your transaction would be declined based on it taking over two minutes for the information to get from continent to continent. So couldn't buy anything online. Um, even, and then some websites, even to this day, um, Stripes Gateway in particular, um, base, rejects uh, credit cards from Africa just automatically. Like your bank will be like, yeah, they asked, but then they stopped, they, they canceled the request. Um, just based on your address. Your billing address is in Kenya. They're like, no, not worth it, gonna be fraudulent. So, that's what I always remember. And when I was crafting in my second year here, I know I talked about it in another podcast. I forget which one, but uh, when I did move here, my, I loved the first year. It was fabulous. But then the second year, it was like, I felt like super like trapped, like, you know, you, there's nothing, you can't go out. You could like, you could do, there's no Starbucks. There's no this, there's no that, which there is now. But back then I felt very like, like my life was gone, like I was just living at home and staying in my house. Um, 
And in that process, I started, or continue to do, because I've always been a crafty person, is doing all these crafts and looking for this online and that online and things that were paid for, patterns or, or things that were paid for, I couldn't use. So I would have to search more and more and more to find something that was free because my credit card wouldn't work, period. Like you just don't even bother with it. So I remember that and I remember being so thankful for people who did free patterns. And some of them were like so good and so detailed. Even for my sewing, there's some like book cover ones, like just amazing, like very well done and very free. And I was always thankful to those people for doing that because I could not buy a pattern if I wanted to. At that stage in my life, internet's better now and you can shop generally online anywhere as long as it's not that stripes gateway thingy. Um, but Amazon's great. Like you can get just about anything on Amazon. Etsy's great. All that is fine. But I do give, you know, respect to people who do things for free. And I want to be one of those people also who does things for free, uh, like free patterns, free tutorials, like share, like make the world better with what you do. I think that's great. Um, in keeping with that, I do like to buy patterns. I like to support other people who have made good patterns or who have made patterns who's that's their livelihood that's their business i totally want to support them i want them to do well and i want them to be encouraged to keep doing it so i guess i'm kind of in the middle of it but sometimes you go and buy a pattern and you can't even judge by how much it is so like there's one particular pattern i won't mention the designer but fabulous Instagram, fabulous everything, fabulous photography, fabulous everything. Uh, Max is out on the patterns. Everything is $5.99, which I think is the most you can sell a pattern for on Ravelry. Or is it $6.99? Anyway, hers are $5.99. And there was other patterns for what I wanted to make. It was for the Ruana poncho. Um, just to make sure there wasn't like a trick to it or you know whoever's made it the best da, da, da. so i ended up paying six dollars for a pattern that was about three sentences long so upset if a pattern if you only and like size 18 font to even fill up the bottom section of a page like absolutely appalling alarming like how shameful is that you cannot charge that's like two dollars a sentence for like chain and then stop chaining and go back and then chain and keep going like there is no rocket science to that like at all there's it's not even a formula there's no trick to it it's literally make a rectangle go back and forth for like a row and a half like two rows and then go back make it the full length again Keep going until they're match on both sides you're, you're done so simple such a ridiculously simple pattern and i'm still burning you can tell i'm burning right <laughs> so burning that i paid six dollars for it <sighs> anyway i'm gonna let it go so that's my paid for pattern thing i want to just do free patterns anyway that's on the website so i've got the website sorted out there is a page for projects a page for podcasts and a page for products. So it's, the pro it's not finished yet. Like the format is there. Like if I add to the website, things will pop up on the pages I want them to be on. That's as far as I've gotten. It took forever. I kept on trying to do it. I don't know if any of you are like tech heads out there or build websites, but I used to think I was super savvy, but I would just take a WordPress template and then change it. Like put in your logo, put in your own pictures, put in your font and you have a slamming website. So good and fine. And then I upgraded to like this, whatever it is, Divi thing, it's drag and drop. So you take your module and you drag it over and you basically build your own pages. Uh, it's not hard, but there's so many options and so many places to edit the exact same thing with different results that it's a bit confusing. So it took a week before I gave up and put in, like I did a thing to, cause you pay for it, it was like $90 or something and you get one year of customer support. So I'm like, well, let me just send an email or like a service ticket or whatever it is, because technically for $90, they're supposed to tell me how I'm supposed to do it. You know, so swallow the pride, put in a ticket. She gets back to me in like an hour saying, oh, you can't, what you want to do, you can't do. I was like, <laughs> okay, that would have been helpful. So anyway, did it a different way, 
like just within the theme or well, you know, whatever. It's complicated. I should not be talking about this. It's boring, I'm sure. However, super frustrated, got it sorted out, have it generally started. And this morning, my piece de la resistance is I put a countdown timer on the, towards the bottom of the page for uh, when our next live chat is going to be. So wherever you are in the world, you can just go to secretyarnery.com, scroll to the bottom of the page, and there's like a pink little section with a teacup, and it's countdown to next live chat. So it has the days, the hours, the minutes, and you can kind of figure out for wherever part of the world you're in uh, when we're going to be online. So that, <laughs> that was my big brain wave this morning. So the website's coming along. Patterns are going to be there for free. And speaking of very good crochet news, I got the most lovely email in the middle of the night. And by middle of the night, I mean like 2 a.m. or when I rolled over and checked my phone, there was uh, an email to Secret Yarnery from Krista, spelt with a K, at allfreecrochet.com saying I've been mentioned in like on their on their blog the top 10 plus crochet uh youtube channels i was like what are you serious right now so then i was the, they linked my uh, starter not starter introductory video or whatever which i just made last week just so there was something on the home page trying to like educate myself on these things so i just did a little short thing slammed it on there put a, some picture on that wasn't ugly and then but it, was, it didn't represent anything, it just wasn't ugly. And then it was on this allcrochet.com all or all free crochet uh, blog. <gasps> Had to run downstairs, neck light, <laughs> go to the office, do, 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 make a proper thumbnail for it, because how can it be like public with this lame picture that's unrelated? Anyway, got that sorted out, go back to bed, da 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 da. da. But how cute is that? So we're out of the, you know, 10 plus YouTube crochet channels to watch. We're number 12. But in front is like Moogly, Red Heart, Lion Brand, uh, so many like actual players. So I, mean, I was super happy about that. I was like, oh, look at that. So that was exciting. So big shout out to Free Patterns because allfreecrochet.com is also free. So that is very good and by free well they are free but there are advertisements which are um a, another avenue of income for these crochet people so i guess it's paid patterns or throw in some advertisements fair enough so anyway i was super excited about that and which kind of starts me on my um question and answer. I'm just going to pop one in because I also want to get back to the post office because that was, okay, no, let me do post office because that was such a, okay, I went to the post office this week. I went on Monday. I had a car. I'm like, let me go. Zoom, zoom. I get there. Sure enough, it's the two ladies who don't, I won't say they don't like me. Maybe they don't like their job, but the ones who just charge too much, but I'm like, whatever, it's Monday get it done. It's going to be like, if you don't do it now, you're like, when are you going to do it? Get it done, get it in the mail. So I'm like, I'm just going to mail three of them. I have three more to mail, but just split it up because if they're charging like 40 bucks a pop, um, you know, going over a hundred bucks a week for mailing, you know what? It's a bit like crazy. So I'm like, just send three, get it done. Do the three, uh, a whole bunch of forms to fill out. And by whole bunch of forms, I mean three pieces of paper per parcel times three, nine pieces of paper, uh, addresses, all the contact details for the person I'm sending it to, plus myself, which is, you'd think you just do triplicate, like, you know, but actually different pieces of paper, like different format, different, like just, ugh. anyway, I'm like, it's okay. Breathe through it. You're going to be fine. Uh, the lady tells me, oh, here's this one form. Just, you know, fill this one out um, uh, once and we'll photocopy it three times. I get down to the part, so I do, I'm like, okay, like you work here, like I am not a post office worker, you are, uh, you know, it's your expertise. So I get down to the next section, which is fill in the address of the person you're sending it to, which is, that's the house alarm next door. It goes off all the time, it, mean, it literally means nothing. Like it means, I don't know, they woke up or 
they're going to bed, like who knows, and no, they don't turn it off. Um, so I get down to the section where you have to put in the other person's address, and I'm like, I can't have one, you can't photocopy this information, it's different addresses, which proceeds to turn into an actual fight between the two ladies working there. They're shouting at each other, literally, here, they're shouting at each other. I'm trying to just like look down and like just calculate my total so I'm not like gasping when they tell me how much I have to pay. I'm just like, you know, let them, literally, they probably shouted at each other for like five minutes and repeating the same thing. Like my Swahili is not perfect, but they're basically just arguing. And the younger lady is telling the older lady, no, it gets going to three different houses. And the older lady is just yelling back, that's the one, she can fill it out, blah, 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 blah. I'm just like, oh my gosh, Monday, right? So sure enough, then my guy, who's sensible, walks in and he's like, oh yeah, no, 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 no. They have to restart, the, they have to print out a new, they try to print out a new one, a new form, because I guess it was their last form that they gave me to fill out. Like you don't have a stack of papers for parcels at a post office. You have one piece of paper and you give it to one person to fill out. So then they try to restart their computer to print out another one. They can't or they, whatever. They, so anyway, the guy ends up taking the piece of paper, walking into the shopping center, which is just behind. Um, I'm sitting on my feet. Oh, maybe I shouldn't sit on my feet. Um, so he goes walking into the shopping mall to photocopy it, of which there's a brand new photocopy place, literally, uh, like I parked the same place I parked when I took you guys to Maasai Market. So same flight of stairs, walk across, go down one flight of stairs, and you are at a photocopy place. Like, it's right there. So yes, you have, it's going upstairs and going downstairs, but it's like four minutes, and that's like taking your time. Forty minutes later, Forty minutes. Forty minutes. He comes back. He has photocopied the same piece of paper and kind of whited out the details on it. That's their new form for the post office. The post office now has whited out my mailing address and Melody Crochet's mailing address. Yes, Melody, you're famous. Uh, and that's their new form. You can't, you don't know it's Melody Crochet and you don't know it's me, but when you go to write again, like my letters line up right on top of the letters that were there before. How alarming is that? So I was so just gonna leave. I'm like, oh my gosh, like let, like, let me know when you're open for business and I will come back. Cause clearly you're not open for business. Oh, see, I'm getting riled up again. Anyway, so that was, uh, that was Monday. And the guy also, they also start another conversation of registered mail versus small parcel. So apparently this is a small parcel. Box shape, right? Same items in an envelope shape. I think I can send as registered mail. Anyway, so I've redone that one. This Zelda's, Zelda baby, you're next week. Uh, same stuff, but not like just in a, in like a crappy envelope inside another crappy envelope. Duct tape on the edges so hopefully it doesn't fall apart. Uh, probably less than half price. Anyway, I'll let you know how that one goes. I was even thinking of putting this in the bigger envelope so it's really, it looks like an envelope and then it should just go registered mail instead of special parcel, whatever, blah, 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 that these bad boys get to go in. Anyway, Karibu, Kenya, that, is, that was my week. So, uh, I, anyway, they're mailed. Both Melodies, check out your mailbox. 
And, oh, there's a bird sitting on my chicken coop. That's, I think it's a bird. It also it's a mouse, I can't see. Um, uh, and who else? And Lisa. Lisa's getting one too. Anyway, that was that one. Okay, so that's good. That's pretty much my crochet chat, although I did digress early, I apologize. Um, probably missing out on something. What was it about? Oh, I'm just going to go through the, the Q&A now. Uh, oh, e I, uh, telling you, old age. Okay, so now the questions, of which there's a lot. So, bear with me. So, first question, food, Kenyan food. Uh, the basic Kenyan diet, like for Kenyan, like African Kenyans, is ugali, which is cornmeal but cooked like cream of wheat, but till it's firm and hard with a little pile of salt and some, uh, I guess it's kale, but it's like local spinach. It's called u, uh, skuma. So ugali and skuma is the basic diet, but it also depends on what tribe you are. Some tribes have beans and rice, some, but just about everybody has ugali. Uh, popular food, that's the, that's the native food or the local food. Uh, but then there's also restaurants and like all the international cuisine. So like lots of really good Italian restaurants, really good Japanese. We had uh, Danish friends here who said the sushi here was the best sushi they've had. And they travel like a lot. Um, so obviously really good Japanese restaurants. Mexican restaurants have been not so good, although there's two new Japanese, uh, two new Mexican restaurants I haven't tried yet, but they're supposed to be good. Uh, I'd like to try them. Uh, lots of like pizza, burgers, regular stuff. So lots of international cuisine, which is the normal food that, that we eat at my house. Grocery store prices, depending on what it is, like uh, if it's locally produced, it's very inexpensive. It's much cheaper, like uh, mangoes, avocados, things like that. Fruit and veg that's grown here is ri ridiculously cheap and um, things that are imported are ridiculously expensive. So like, uh, not Heinz ketchup, I think we consume enough of that now where it's not too expensive, but is this going out of focus or what is going on here? It's bothering me now. Let me tilt it a bit. Okay, let's try that. Oh, and let me take this off too. Okay, uh, but things are imported like mayonnaise, cranberry sauce, Skippy peanut butter, but then I haven't left uh, the, like the continent for over a decade. So like Skippy peanut butter, the one liter size, I guess, 500 grams is about $12. So I don't know what it is. I can check Amazon, I suppose. Uh, so imported things are expensive. Local things are not. And meat. Do we have meat in the grocery stores? Yes, we do. Depending, some grocery stores have their own butchery and some grocery stores just supply um, like, like pre-packaged meat from bigger butcheries. We have a really good one here, although I thought it was horrible for like 10 years. I never tried it because I didn't like the packaging. It was red and white and I was like, that's gross. But anyway, super delicious. Uh, it's called Farmer's Choice. I'll put the website up there so you can at least see what the spelling is. Also in the description box below. Run by uh, Danes, Danish people. Super classy. You can like go out there and, and like place your order and buy stuff or they also supply to grocery stores. If you order $200 worth, they'll like, even deliver it to your house. So it's not, it's about 10 to 20% cheaper if you drive out there. It's about a 40 minute drive. And, but if you're buying like a cooked ham, if you buy, well, ham is, is like almost twice as expensive in the grocery store. Everything else is only 10 to 20%, but if you're getting a full cooked ham, get in your car and drive out there. It's so much cheaper. Um, but other than that, we have butcheries and there's a lot of butcheries. Not a lot, but I'll, like every, if there's a grocery store, there's, so we have grocery stores, we have green grocers, which is your fruit and veg, and we also have 
uh, butchers. So there's like, it's like a three-stop shop. Although Care4, the big grocery store, it's all, they have everything. And Chan around is Food Plus. I'll put the link up there. You can also check your prices at that when it's online, obviously, or we wouldn't have a website. Um, they have the fruit and veg and uh, meat all inside. But you can still buy Farmer's Choice inside all of those ones, and you can still go to your own butcher. The perk about going to your own butcher is they trim and do all that stuff that you like them to package it how you want it to be packaged if you're putting it in the freezer or whatever, and give you the scraps for your dogs or whatever you're doing. So lots of butcheries, and I'll take you on a little tour next time I'm out and about at a butchery, because they're kind of cool. Uh, crochet holiday, totally want to do it, have not uh, got it priced out yet. I, there's another travel agency that I think I need to find and work with who is even cheaper because obviously including the airfare coming over blah 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 um, we want it to still be affordable and fabulous fabulous is easy but I just want it to be a good price for you guys uh, if you want to buy a bracelet from Kazuri beads uh, you can buy from uh, Kazuri kazuri.co.uk. I'll put the link above and below in the description box. You can check out the description box anytime. There's all my links down in there and anything I have misspoken about. But you can buy from them. Um, if you wanted something from here specifically, uh, you can send me an email and we'll see how to go about it. But I don't have anything set up for that and I don't have PayPal. So it's a bit of a pain in the butt. Uh, I should get PayPal, but my PayPal is associated with my orphanage, so I don't like it getting confused that way. I just have to cancel it, I guess. Uh, what does a houseman do and what does a house mom do? So house girls are women who work in your house and house man is a man that works in your house. They can have different jobs, but basically it is uh, cleaning laundry. That's it, cleaning and laundry. Uh, some of them do cooking, but generally that's like a different profession here. And house moms, a house mom, usually they just work at, like that's more of like an orphanage term, like somebody who looks after children for a living. Uh, it wouldn't be, like if you had a nanny, a nanny would be called an aya, A-Y-A-H, which is like a nanny. So ayas are nannies, house moms work in a place where they look after more than like it's their job to look after a bunch of children so orphanages um, boarding schools also have house moms or house mothers somewhere where a, a woman looks after a bunch of kids and is it for everybody or just the affluent if you are employed and you have kids then you would have somebody to look after your uh, kids so like even my house girl, she has kids. So she has, she has uh, like a nanny for her kids. Um, like somebody to, who looks after them. So it's not, for, you don't, I mean, it's not for the affluent, but their job kind of, um, the job description varies. But if you're working, yes, you're gonna have, you're gonna have staff pretty much. It would just be like a less, sometimes you'd, you'd give room or board and they would kind of help clean up your house when you're at work, something like that. Like you work out a different, uh, what do you call it? You have a different um, agreement or arrangement. Uh, yes, my, three of my kids are adopted. Uh, two of them were adopted so young they didn't, they were babies, so they didn't speak their tribal language. One was adopted when he spoke uh, two languages. So he spoke Swahili and his native uh, tribal language. But the, and, and now he speaks English as well. But my other ones just speak Swahili a little bit. Uh, do I miss the snow or a season? I miss the snow before Christmas and I miss the snow for my kids because I think it's so nice to play in the snow, have snowball fights. Like they see it on TV and they're like, wow, that's snow. Like in their head, it's a great, big, uh, fabulous mystery, which of course it's not, but 
So I missed snow. I could have it for like two days. The third day it can go. I'm totally fine with that. And I don't miss any seasons. I guess fall is pretty. Fall is pretty to see. I don't like cleaning up in the fall. And Norma, yes, I can send you a postcard. <laughs> so email me your address. Uh, is stuff here expensive? Only if it's imported, because there's like 40% importation duty plus uh, the shipping to get it here. So if you send it by sea, it takes like a few months to get here. And if you send it by air, it's like per kilo plus the volume. Da, da, da. So shipping's expensive and duty's expensive. The wall, is it for sale? Kind of. It used to be, it used to be. Now I'm kind of, I mean, it still is. I do share, but it's kind of more of a hassle than, than I enjoy. Like I'd like to just shop for myself and have it all there, but I do share. So yes, it's for sale. Do I knit? Yes, I do. Well, no, I don't. I know how to knit and I have knit. I don't knit because I'm too busy crocheting. I choose, I choose crocheting over knitting just because it's faster and I like getting something done. Um, but I can knit. I just choose not to at this stage in my life. Do I, Brenda, do I take time for myself? <laughs> so funny. You like, no, I don't. But I do, like yesterday, because uh, I knew I wasn't doing a vlog until today or a podcast until today. So I was like, oh, well, I could, I could crochet my blankets. So I sat uh, here on my nice sofa just there, and I watched my Netflix just there, and I did my crocheting. And I was like, I guess that counts as time for myself, right? So I did. And I was like, oh, Brenda, I'm doing it. <laughs> so I guess I do. Uh, the basket for the May giveaway, is it for sale? No, uh, I, I bought it for, I think I paid $10 for it. I don't know who makes them. I got it out at a gift shop in the bush, so out of town. I thought it was quite cute. I don't know, I, they're for sale somewhere, I don't know where. Oh, will I get a new houseman? Yes, I will. I interviewed the next day, so last Thursday I did interviews. Uh, I met a very nice man. He'd worked for a Tanzanian family for 12 years, and that family moved back to Tanzania. Uh, he can work in the house, he can work in the garden, he does cooking, blah, 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 blah. So he is starting on May 1st. And we also found this really nice young lady who started the next day. So she's already here. She is lovely. She's from the coast, but moved to Nairobi two years ago to look for work. So that's really great. And how I found them is there's like an advertisement board at um, a local shopping mall, Village Market. So I, and so was it advertising board? Well, you can go and post your resume or whatever with your numbers to tear off at the bottom. So I went through a couple days before I heard my houseman was leaving and I got all, like I just took the, na the numbers for people that had cooking in part of their letters of reference or job descriptions. So thinking I hired somebody who can do cooking and both of those people have done cooking in the past. Not professional, but can participate, I suppose, or willing to learn. So that's how I did it. I send an, a text message to Everybody stating, you know, the days of the week they have to work, the salary, this, that, if they live in, live out, like the details of the job. And if they're interested, then they can come to, um, I meet at the food court at a specific time, a specific day, buy everybody a cup of tea. Uh, they fill out an application form. I talk to them, go over their resume, photocopy their resume and ID, and then just for, my, for future reference, and then decide. So I found two. How lucky is that? So that was like meant to be. Crime rate? Uh, it's not, crime is not really reported the way it should be, I suppose. So you never really know. Uh, you hear what's happening. So like, you know, your area, like what's happened in your area. In my 17 years, 
in the area I have lived in, here, well, not, I guess I shouldn't say that, but like my neighbors of the houses, like my nearest neighbors that I've heard about that, you know, you're like, oh gee, that house over there. Uh, there has been, there was three uh, like burglaries, I suppose, within three months and it was all at the same house. Go figure. Uh, but generally, the gist of it is, usually, it would be your staff. So, like, some people are, they have a hard time being employers, I guess, to people, like, in their home. So, I think, so the staff are mistreated. I'd like to think it's cultural, and Canadians are all nice, but a few, not even a few, probably like 10 years ago, there was a couple from Vancouver who got um, robbed or whatever uh, across town, like, you know, hour and a half away. But it was shocking. You're like, what, people from Vancouver? Like, were that mean? Because generally that's what it is. It's not, um, it's targeted. It's not random. Like if you're, yeah. So crime rate is very low. Where's my yarn from? So these two shelves here, there's a shelf here and then one below. So from the green down, uh, that's all local. There's a couple factories. There's three factories in Kenya that I source from just to get the good colors from each one because each factory itself does not have all the good colors. And we need the good colors. And then above, I source elsewhere from, uh, most of it's from Turkey. So I bring all that in myself. Uh, prices for the crochet holiday already talked about that butchers already talked about that affiliate links how do they work so in the description box below I have affiliate links which means uh, this is like a link and it goes straight to Amazon the regular Amazon but just by clicking on it and then going to do your shopping a small commission I suppose it's called goes towards my account on Amazon so it's not much, it's like a couple percent. Uh, it depends on what it is. So some items, like I think it's like if you get electronics or Kindles, it can go up or eBooks or something. They have different commissions for different things, different sections. And the sections that we're interested in, crochet and all that, uh, the commission's not that much. It, but it's about 4% or something like that. So every little bit helps. So if you go and click on the link and then you go and do your Amazon shopping, everything kind of rolls towards... Uh, how would I explain that? Well, everything kind of... A small commission of whatever you buy, no matter what it is, if it's something I've, I've linked to or you're just whatever shopping you're doing, doing on Amazon goes towards the secret yarnery after a few days. And then it gets accredited to... Uh, the secret yarnery in like uh, two months after the end of the month. So it's like a long process and it's a small percentage, but it all helps. So if whatever Amazon shopping you, you do, click on a link below or on anybody else's links below or links that they have, any affiliate, because um, now I'm all about it. I didn't know that that's how it worked. So now even for my shopping, I'll go and find somebody who has affiliate links that I like, that I believe in, and I'm like, oh yeah, click, and then I'll go do my shopping. It's the same money to you and to me, but a little bit, uh, like Amazon has set aside a bit of commission that they're willing to pay somebody else. So somebody else might as well get it. So that is the affiliate links. So whatever shopping you're doing, check out the links below. Is this being weird? It is, right? I don't know, I might have to film this whole thing again. Anyway, click on the affiliate links below for all of your shopping needs. So thank you so much for everybody who's already done that. Can't wait. Um, gonna get a new camera. So this thing stops. Apparently they have like um, silent lenses, autofocus, none of this weird thing going on. So that's, my, that's what I'm saving up for on my Amazon. I can't wait. Well, I can wait, so I'm gonna wait. But we'll be getting on that soon and have a great week everybody see you on friday for our live crochet chat check the website for how many like for the countdown timer to that it was two days and eight hours as of right now but by the time i edit this it'll be like two days and something so check that out keep up to date on it can't wait to talk to you on friday and have a great week stay hooked
but isn't this a fabulous little road? So this is like a main road. This is Lamuru Road. And I love it. So cute. And the forest is just down here at the sea bottom. And that's a tree nursery. Like they sell trees, you can buy those plants. I guess it's plants, not trees. Well, there's trees though, actually, too. The gates, we're going in. Now we have to pay bad humbug. So you have to pay to go into the forest and you have to pay to get your car into the forest. So we will be doing both. be back or maybe I can take you with me I'll try take some small monies I think it's like two bucks to bring your car okay, let's see. I shut you a bit let us go You need my ID. You are resident or visiting? Resident. Do so you want my ID? 200 Okay, so I'm bringing my car too. 300. Okay, that's what I thought. Thank you kindly. You got on? Yes. For now. Thank you. Okay, that was good. That was polite. for me to go inside and a dollar for my car. Now, let me try security. Again. We're driving a big old family van. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It has power steering. I should just maybe work out more. <laughs> How are you? Fine, fine. How are you today? Good, thank you. Would you mind saying anything? Yes. Did you need this one or no? No. Okay, just good. hold it for you for a while. Thank you. Let me see what you need from me. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Have a nice day. Yeah. Okay, here we go. So you are officially in Kareru Forest. Which I think is pretty lovely. Uh, yes, they put speed bumps here too. No, this one doesn't make sense at all. Plus, it's a hill. And these poor lorries. So it was two dollars for me to come in and one dollar to drive my car. So that's a pretty good deal. And they have. Um, like forest rangers in here like keeping it safe and stuff it used to just kind of be super abandoned and uh, 
there's even caves and stuff in here where I don't know if you know much about Kenyan history but the Mau Mau used to like when they were revolting against colonialism they camped out in here they still have graffiti on the cave walls and stuff it stinks like pee though I take you but it stinks like pee Ugh. I went once Boy Scouts my kids on Boy Scouts my boy actually just my oldest when he was in Boy Scouts Cub Scouts Cub Scouts that's what it is so I was like okay yeah let's go for a hike Ugh. it stunk like pee it was cool though I mean I'm glad I did it off the list maybe they cleaned it but mm, I don't know that was probably like seven years ago So up here, eventually, there's a really cool restaurant. But it's really beautiful, like you'll see, it's really beautiful. It's worth the three bucks. And like, you, I, you don't know how close we are to my house, but we're like, oh, uh, like five minutes from, a village market like where Kazuri Beach shop is where I took you shopping Kazuri Beach and that is about 12 minutes from my house so it's like 17 minutes from your house and you live in a city it's five it's like two minutes from the Canadian Embassy and three minutes from the US Embassy and look where you are it's like being on safari They have lots of walking trails and they have them marked out and like kind of color coded for like 5k or 10k or whatever. Sorry for the reflection. Maybe if I hold it up. No, that does not help. Sorry. Back, forward. All right. There's people walking. Good for you. I'm more of a driver and an eater. And this is the River Cafe. Thank you kindly. Speed bumps, see I'm telling you. Don't potholes slow us down enough. You'd really think, right? doing interesting style so now river cafe is here doesn't look like much from this side oh i love all those things i'll show you when we go in my friends are well what did, oh it's exactly 10 30. i'm just saying how canadian is that 10 30. where am i here Oh, I think Amanda's here. That might be Amanda's car. Nope, it's not. Ay, ay, ay. The pain of it. Okay. Well, now we can get out. I hear those birds. So yep, like 10 minutes from my house. This over there, I've seen that rented out for weddings and stuff. They put up tents and... I saw one, fancy tent, like the big peaked white one with gold literally gold, metallic gold chairs. I was like, what? You know you're in a forest, right? But it is really pretty. I mean, you know, that's a pretty nice place. They rented out.
don't know what they're doing over there. Oh, I think there's a garden back in there. Looks like vegetables, maybe. Or plants. Something. My shopping bag's all rattling. Yarn delivery, you can always tell. have a reservation but if we're a group of three Finished lunch. It is now oops, 47. So um, it was a nice lunch. Lovely. Caught up with the ladies. It might rain now. It's getting chilly out. 23 and a half degrees. So now we are just leaving the forest. Up ahead, you can rent bikes, actually, to drive around in here, and there's footpaths around that haven't been. There's also an off-leash dog area somewhere in there. Haven't found it. But apparently, it's lovely for the dog people. 